Crisis on Infinite Earths by Marv Wolfman, book review. <clears throat> so this is another paperback book that's based on comic books. This, is, this was an infamous, infamous comic book series published in 1986. And advanced warning on here, this is, this is going to get a, a bit geeky. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk first of all about the comic book series on which this book is based on. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth is something that if you're a comic book geek you probably know about it already and if you're not a comic book geek you probably don't care about it. So I, no sense giving a long-winded explanation about it I guess. Besides it's all on Wikipedia and it's all on the internet anyways. But um, Simplest possible explanation I can give is this one. Uh, DC Comics had a lot of continuity differences between the golden age of comics in the 1940s and the silver age of comics in the 1960s. Uh, so what happened is there was a period in the 1950s when superheroes kind of went out of fashion. And then they came back into fashion in the 1960s and DC started using them again. But they they gave them kind of new names and different powers and kind of different backstories. So you had like two different versions of the Flash, one from the 1940s, one from the 1960s. You had two different versions of Green Lantern, one from the 1940s, one from the 1960s. Uh, and eventually, uh, somebody decided that to kind of be able to use both these characters, they decided they existed in two different parallel universes. There is Earth-1, where the Silver Age comic book characters live, and then Earth-2, where the Golden Age counterparts live, the Golden Age superheroes live. And they, every few years, or I think maybe every year, would have a crossover event, where there was some sort of crisis on Earth-2 or something like that where the, the Golden Age superheroes and the Silver Age superheroes would be able to meet each other through some sort of uh, travel between the parallel universes. That worked fine for several years, but eventually it was decided that this was too confusing, especially since comic book readers tend to be young. So, you know, for your average kind of eight-year-old kid, it's a lot of confusing history to kind of keep track of all these different universes. So they decided to do a big event to kind of merge everything together once and for all. And as Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, not only, yeah, not only were they trying to clean up their continuity, but they also wanted to sell comics. Uh, and this was during an age where these huge multi-part crossovers were becoming popular. So they decided to do this huge multi-part crossover uh, to explain how these all these different worlds are going to get merged into one. And there was some like the, like some sinister force who was doing it. Um, and then if you want to get even more complicated, you could add in the fact that DC by this time had bought up the rights of a lot of their old competitors. So uh, some of these old comic book companies that used to exist in the 40s and 50s and 60s, like as Charlton Comics or Quality Comics or Fawcett Comics, that had a lot of characters and intellectual properties like Blue Beetle, uh, Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters, Captain Marvel. DC had the rights to them but uh, because these characters existed in different universes, DC kind of had them on more parallel Earths. So they wanted to kind of bring it all together into kind of just one universe. There's a lot more to it than that, but I won't get into it. I again, you can look it up in other places online. And again, it's, it's one of these things you probably already know it if you care. And if you don't care, um, you don't care, right? So uh, this started in 1985 and I think went through 1986, which was largely before my time. I was six years old in 1985. I, you know, I watched Super Friends on TV, so I knew who these characters were. 
But, you know, if, if you would have asked six-year-old me the difference between Golden Age Superman and Silver Age Superman, I, I couldn't have explained it to you. I didn't know what Crisis was. I wasn't even reading comic books at the time. I was just familiar with the cartoons. That being said, I have friends, people the same age as me, who were reading these comic books when they came out and kind of did seem to kind of realize the significance of what was happening, or at least so they claim. So I don't know, maybe I was just slow as a kid, or who knows. Uh, anyways, it's in this day and age, uh, it's all c collected in graphic novels. So you can, you can buy the graphic novel of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and you can kind of read the story that came out originally in 1985 and 1986. And I did, actually. Uh, at one point, I, I ordered it, or bought it in a bookstore, I think, and read through the whole thing, and... <sighs> you know, like, I know <clears throat> Crisis on Infinite Earths is supposed to be one of the classic, all-time great comic book crossovers of all time. I just found it so confusing and so convoluted. I couldn't understand what was happening half the time. So, in 2006, for the 20th anniversary of Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, DC Comics decided to release the novelization of it. So it's, you know, it's a paperback book uh, with, you know, no pictures, just kind of the written text, but retelling the same story by Marv Wolfman, who was one of the guys who uh, wrote the original comic book back in 1986. Uh, and I thought, ah, great. Because I figure if you read a novelization, you're going to get kind of more details. And the Crisis on Infinite Earths comic book, it always really confused me. So I thought, I'm going to read this novelization. I'm going to finally understand what's going on. I'm going to get all the details. So I had my friend who worked at the bookstore order a copy with me. Uh, and I regret to say that this book didn't help me at all. Um, I was hoping the novelization would go into more detail because that's the whole point of a novelization, right? I mean, if you just want the original story, you can just read the original comic books. You buy the novelization because you're hoping the author is going to take use of the medium to just go into more detail. But, you know, it's a very thin volume and it actually just explains a lot less than the comic book. I suspect, I don't know this for a fact, I suspect Marv Wolfman didn't want to write this thing. And somebody made him, said, you know, yeah, you've got to write it. It's the 20th anniversary. We need a paperback. Um, but yeah, there, there's just, there's not a lot of interesting detail in it. In it. <clears throat> there's also, the book is told from the perspective of Barry Allen, who's the original Silver Age Flash, which is an interesting narrative choice because Barry Allen dies halfway through the crisis. So how is he going to narrate the events that happen after he dies? Uh, I was reading an interview with Marv Wolfman somewhere online. Uh, he, again, he's the guy who wrote both the original comic and the novelization. Marv Wolfman said he never wanted to kill off the original Flash, but it was an editorial decision that came from above that he had to do it. He said he f he's felt guilty about it ever since, so he's trying to kind of make up for some of that guilt by making the novel a tribute to Barry Allen, the original Flash, and have it all narrated, narrated from the Flash's perspective. Now, the way he gets around this is he has the Flash start slipping in and out of time. So he's able to foresee his own death, and the events around his death and the events after his death. It's an interesting idea, it kind of works, but all the jumping around in time just makes an already confusing plot even more confusing. I mean, Crisis on Infinite Earth was already this huge, convoluted, confusing story. Another interesting thing is for a comic book so, sorry, for a novel based on a comic book that took place in 1985 and 1986, there are a ton of anachronisms in here. There's references to emails, Homer Simpson, Jurassic Park, 
Yahoo MapQuest, all these things that were not around in 1985 and 1986. Now, at first, I thought they were honest mistakes, you know, just sloppy writing. But then there were so many of them that I, you know, I had to believe that Marv Wolfman was doing them on purpose. But I'm not sure why. I mean, why is he trying to update the crisis story? Uh, and it really doesn't make any sense. I mean, DC the DC comics have come up with different ways to update their universe over time. For example, Crisis on Infinite Earths kind of reset the timeline and it kind of allowed them to kind of update their superheroes and say, no, 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 you know, Batman's not 60 years old. He's still 30 or 25 or however old he's supposed to be uh, because we've reset the timeline. And that's, I don't know, you can debate whether that's good or bad, but they have an in-universe explanation for why they can do that. But then what's the in-universe explanation for how Crisis gets updated. I mean, Crisis was the in-universe explanation that ex that explained all the updating that came after it. But uh, you can't update the Crisis storyline itself, right? Because it it, it was before the rebooting re of the universe. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It all strikes me as very strange. On the other hand, maybe they were just honest mistakes. I mean, who knows? There are a number of typos in this book. And I think typos in a book like this are just inexcusable. I mean, like, in this day and age, any major publication house has proofreaders. And proofreaders are expected to catch exactly these kind of typos. And if you get a book like this, and nobody's caught the typos, then it just screams at you, nobody cares about this book. You know, it's just something they're writing and dumping on the market as quickly as possible. And there were a number of typos that really just should have been caught during the proofreading. In spite of all that complaining, I enjoyed it anyways, because, you know, it gave me an excuse to feel like I was 14 again and kind of reconnect with uh, these guilty pleasures of my youth. I can't really recommend it, but uh, it's a guilty pleasure. <laughs>